Dr. Porter, what is going on? Just here to wake up brains and uh, get people fit. That's what we're doing. Nah, I, I, I literally just finished a brain tap session. I did a workout and I thought, how do I recover mental energy? Because I know I'm going to need to ask you a lot of good questions. So yes, waking up brains is part of part of the mission. Thanks for being on the masterclass. Hey, it's great to be here. Big believer in what you guys are doing over there. Well, that goes both ways. I mean, we had such a wonderful response of how many people wanted to be here today. So, you know, the ones who can't be here, we'll definitely get the recording out to you guys. So listening to the conversation alone is going to wake up your brain to a greater degree. So, Doc, uh, I didn't brief you too much about how the masterclass works. Um, what we're doing with this process is it's education for education's sake. Most of the people who are on this call are clinicians. They are seeing people. We also have some health warriors. They're on their own journey. So the first question I ask everyone is, what is your story? How did Dr. Porter wake up one day and realize he wanted to wake up every brain on the planet? <laughs> well, it started with me, of course. Um, and it started a long time ago on a planet called Tatooine. No, the, uh, <laughs> what, what happened was the, uh, my dad was actually a very, a very gifted alcoholic. Everything could be going really well and he'd find a way to go get drunk and ruin the family. And there were nine of us. So the church came one day and said, hey, Michael, we're going to teach you how to relax. And it was something called the Silva Method. And I was just 12 years old at the time. So my dad actually stopped drinking. He, he would go every year to other ways to do it. But as soon as he figured out that he was drinking to relax and he found out a way that he could relax, he came home and told the family, hey, I'm going to teach all of you. And by the way, uh, I was held back in second grade. So I'd always been struggling with school. I just I was an artist. I didn't have any logical brain. You know, I just wanted to draw and paint and daydream. And I was good at sports because, of course, physically, I think I was more of a kinesthetic learner doing things. I love yeah. to do. And so my dad taught me how to meditate using the Silva sound. And that sound puts you into a state of alpha. And then fortunate for me, I went to school for electronics first because, you know, I was never going to do what dad does. And now I'm pretty much doing what dad does in a big in a bigger way. And, you know, it just, for me, all along the way, one thing that I no noticed was that if I meditate every day, and I've never missed a day of meditating since I was probably 15, because there were a few days there between 13, 12 and 15 that I tried to be a rebel. And I would realize I'd get angry, I'd get upset, I would be, uh, I would be the kind of kid nobody wanted to be around. But as soon as I would meditate, it, meditation became my medication. And, um, and then I would tell my friends about it and they couldn't meditate. They thought I was crazy. And I remember my mile relay team in high school. I taught them all how to go to level and we visualized. We still have a record today in my hometown of Battle Creek, Michigan, because, you know, uh, poor white guys back then beating people from all over the state was not heard of. And we did it because we visualized. I said, you got to visualize it to realize it. And we started eating healthy. My, I was blessed to live in a town that had the very first health food store in the world. Battle Creek, Michigan, Dr. Kellogg, he was a Seventh-day Adventist, and he started the health food stores there. So I grew up with a family that are not going to the candy stores. We didn't have candy in our house. We didn't have dyes. All the things people know are normal now. We did. We were the weird group. For those who are old enough to remember Yule Gibbons, I was actually, in my yearbook, it says, I'm going to replace Yule Gibbons in the Grape Nuts commercials. So that's how long I've been around doing, doing this. So you know, here we are. And, and every year, I mean, I was blessed. I had a series of, uh, I think, divine appointments where I met the people who were running a piece of equipment co called Light and Sound Research, and they couldn't figure out how to get their device working because the owner died. He didn't leave anybody any direction. And I just happened to have this electronics background, right? So God puts you in the right place to use your services, and the rest is history. I'm here now, and we have literally helped millions of people, and we're just getting started, you know, as it says. So, yeah, I think you guys are just in the process of rumbling under the surface before the tidal wave happens. Um, you mentioned Battle Creek, Michigan. I recently watched The Road to Wellville. So, anyone oh, yeah. in the health industry has to watch that movie in order to really understand what we're all trying to do. Yeah. The only part of that that's really true is he did like to give enemas. <laughs> you know, <that> <laughs> well, we're a digestive health company. So, it's a very fitting context. Yeah. Although, enemas yeah. are not part of what we sell. Um, you yeah. go somewhere else for that. Yeah. That being said, 
you guys are wanting to wake up brains. What does that mean? Because you talked about meditation. I'm a brain tap user myself. That's more brain coherence. Can you kind of delineate what the difference is? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that most people don't realize that they're walking around asleep. And there's a, there's a saying out there, the masses are asleep. And you know you have our equipment called the NeuroCheck. And when you, when you are measuring people's brains, we found that the average brain is over 50% in delta. When you're awake, that should be below 10 if you're optimized. Uh, if it's around between, under 30, you're still going to function really high level. But most people, are actually the clients come in 70, 80% of their brains in delta. That means they have a lot of inflammation. And uh, we do see, uh, because I, I'm a fine believer, my, everyone who hears my talks out there will see nutrition is number one. So anybody listening, I believe nutrition, you cannot think a bad diet. So don't get me wrong. But if your thinking's not right, the digestion won't work as well as it could because you have a thinking digestive tract. So when I'm talking about awakening brains, the number one brain that I'm trying to awaken isn't the one between your ears. That's, that's actually like a slave brain the, because it, it's or a Google tablet, think of it. But there's a heart brain, and this heart brain has 40,000 very specific cells. They call neutrino cells. They think, they act, they respond, they work, they're independent brain. And that brain actually communicates, just as the gut does, more to the brain between our ears than, than the brain between our ears does to either one of those two. So that's the, if, if you can wake up all three of these brains, you get this coherence that you become this powerful, healthy individual that can change lives. And I believe everyone out there is, there's a spark within everyone. You might not know what it is right now, but you're here because you're going to share that knowledge with the world around you. And it could just be with your family. It could be like my dad did. And then my dad went out and became a silver instructor and started teaching the world. I tell people because this alcoholic went to a weekend workshop, he's literally changed millions of lives because I would be the guy that had to get the breakthrough. Then I, I would have had to fall off my bar stool at 45, you know, and realize, Hey, I needed to go get help, you know, <laughs> but luckily I had my breakthrough at 12 instead of uh, waiting. Well, you call it divine. And, and I would say that sounds very appropriate because right now more than ever, we're needing this kind of stuff, you know, to add context to what you're talking about with the neural check, it's a device that basically measures the rhythmicity of heartbeats and associates different things. And I see a lot of people with chronic inflammation, chronic digestive issues, gut brain dis, you know, disassociation, so to speak, their brains are not operating at, at, at not even close to peak efficiency. They're, I call them the sleepwalkers. You right. know, The Walking Dead was a documentary, if you've ever seen that show. So what we try to do when it comes to interventions with supplements is we're focusing on more of the bottom up communication, right? Because correct me if I'm wrong, the gut brain axis is a bi-directional pathway, meaning the brain, this brain and this brain talk to this one. Mm -hmm. But as you just said, the bottom up brains can talk to this one. If someone's trying to use brain tap to improve brain coherence, how does that work with the technology and the synchronicity of how these brains talk together? Well, one thing we know is if you have a leaky gut, which probably 100% of the people do if they're not taking care of it on a daily basis, uh, you have a leaky brain because you have a brain biome as well as a gut biome. So these enzymes don't just go to your gut and say, I'm going to repair you there. They're going to go. There's also biome in the heart. I mean, we have this biome that basically wherever there's neutrino cells and there's more neutrino cells actually in your gut than any other area of the body. So if you really want to be uh, probably the biggest truth is your gut is running the show because we're we're 95% of the time our subconscious mind is running everything and what's that it's our body and really we're a digestive system with arms and legs that powers our brain so we can process it right i mean if we really look at it so i think the main thing here is that if you take care of like i said there's the three waves of wellness i believe number one is nutrition so we need enzymes and most people on the call probably already had that lecture. They don't need me to tell them that. Our you can say it again. I mean, mastery yeah. and repetition is a yeah. wonderful thing. So, so we know that almost everything we eat, including the fruits and vegetables that are on our table, are lacking enzymes. If we went back in time 100 years ago, we would probably eat the food and feel like Superman, you know, because it had so many enzymes. It's the enzymes that give it life. So, you know, if if you have, there's a reason that they took the enzymes out because they want to ship it. There's a book called... Uh, bananas from Montana in January. And the reason that it's a weird title, but what it said was they are denaturing our food to ship it across the country so it doesn't rot on the way to market. Mm -hmm. Well, 
if they slowed that down, then what did they do to the enzymes? Well, they destroyed them. So that's why farm to table is so key right now. Everybody's going or growing your own food and uh, but still need to take enzymes nowadays because we have the science behind it, right? This, the enzymes actually show us that your telomeres don't disintegrate as fast, you know, because that's, it's kind of, you know, all of that. There's so many, so much evidence out there. When we had our franchise company, the number one supplement that our, in our franchise system was always our multi-spectrum uh, uh, enzyme because so many people have indigestion and they think it's because they have too much gas it's because or acid right because they don't have enough so i always tell people if you have indigestion you have a brain problem they go what do you mean you have a brain problem because it starts with what you eat you know if you're not able to digest metabolize and use the energy from the food it's going to infect the affect the biggest hog on the on your body that's your brain it, it uses 25% of the resources so what'll happen is if you're not breaking down your food your brain is going to rob Peter to pay Paul. It's going to rob the rest of your body so it can stay functioning. So it's going to take a little, some minerals from your bones. It's going to take the enzymes from whatever you have. And then there's not going to be anything left for the rest of the body. And then when your adrenals go out or you have a heart problem or you have a liver problem, because the stress of not having the right nutrients is going to go to the weakest link. So it's a, and then, then the other side of that is we've got to move and breathe. You know, if people aren't moving and breathing, that's phase two. You can't you can't eat whatever you want and sit on the couch. You know, in in fact, they now have study after study of hedonistic behavior like potato chips and you know Coca Colas and all the things people do to stay uh, energized while they're watching Netflix. Right. The um, that's what happens is that behavior actually precipitates even worse behavior because the body says I can't move. You're asking me to eat this junk and move. I can't do that. I either can eat this junk or I can move because once you start moving, the body will try to expel that. It will, or move it through the system. So what'll happen is when people start moving and breathing, they stop eating so much junk because the minute they do, they can't move and breathe anymore. <laughs> you know. So, and then, then, then what I like to say is this is when people, it's almost like Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Once you handle those two, now you can meditate. Now you can get in touch with the real you and you're not the person that you think you are. You are 99.999 to the 14th power, empty space, your information. So, and this is what the brain deals with. So, and I'm talking about all three brains now. This, this information, even NIH, which a lot of people don't like, um, I'm talking about now the natural medicine side, not the pill poppers and the, the destroyers of <laughs> not the drug poppers. research side. Yeah. So when th there's a whole side of it that's all in the natural medicine, they actually now you go to the literature, they now talk about the biosphere. We have an energy field that surrounds every living thing. And you can actually see when you don't have enzymatic action in the body, you don't get the light response in the body. We are biophotic beings, meaning that every time a cell divides, a thousand one nanometer light is burst from that exchange. That burst, they now know, transfers information from one cell to two. Now, if you don't have energy, and that comes in the form of enzymatic action, you're not transferring the right information. So for those on the call that remember cassettes, you know, the... the uh, hey, I remember those. I had my own mixtapes. Okay. All right. So <laughs> if you take a cassette and you re you copy the cassette, you don't get the same quality, right? Then you take mm -hmm. the copy of the copy, copy of the copy, copy of the copy. That's our cells. And the reason as we get older, we don't have the same copy is we don't have enzymatic exchange. We don't have the energy to take the information and transfer it perfectly or flawlessly like a digital copy. It's still there. You know, one of the neat things, and this doesn't have to do with enzymes, but I think it's interesting to say now, they took mothers that, um, these were done with rats first and then it went to people, but they, they actually have this group of rats and mice that they actually breed to have heart problems. They breed them to do, that's how sick, you know, the research is. And then what they do is they try to heal them. So they did something with this group. They, they started giving them niacin which is B3, which opens up the blood vessels in the body, you get that niacin release. They found out that once, in, in other B vitamins, but B3 was the main one. And what they found out was, not only did it fix the mice and the rats at the time, but the mothers wouldn't produce bad babies anymore. 
So what does that mean for people? They did the same thing with people. The same thing happened. We're, we're actually transferring on through something called epigenetics, our disabilities to our, our families. When if we are the one, especially people who are pregnant, if they start feeding themselves, you know, naturally in health, in a health way, they will reverse some of these genetic markers that we're seeing because it's not true. We're not, we're not the extent of our genetics. We're the extent of our environment. 80% of our uh, body changes every 40 seconds based on our environment, not on the food. Food is part of it. But if we, and then of course, if we don't have the, the main thing about enzymes that I believe help with brain health in the body in general is that you've got to have the building blocks there. If you have a master builder sitting there and he's going to put bricks around your house, but you don't deliver the bricks or the cement, you can't bitch at the master builder. You know, and that's what a lot of people do, right? They they go, damn it, I don't get the house I want. Well, the builder's sitting there going, the master builder, which is your innate intelligence, is going, give me what I need. And if they don't get what they need, then... They can't bitch at the master builder. You know, you're the you have to deliver to the master builder. It's our job to deliver the materials. It's the divine innate inside of us job to by by divine design it will build it. But if you if you give it junk and you go, hey, I can't believe I've got this junk house. Well, you only use junk material. You know, so we we need to get the right materials in. You can have the best thinking too. You can't outthink a bad diet. I I've met so many people when I was younger, especially that were smokers. And they would tell me this when smoking was really popular. I'm smoking, but I'm I'm transmuting that with my mind. And I said, that's good, but the cigarette never has a bad day. Just like junk food doesn't have a bad day. You do. So on that bad day, you let it in. You know, you let the damage happen. So it, it's really important that we look first to our diet, then to how we're moving and breathing, and then do something daily to really fix our brain. Because it, if we don't give direction to our subconscious, it will keep thinking the past is what we want over and over again because it likes patterns. But it's mm -hmm. our job to break the patterns and to make sure life is exciting and fun. And, you know, and we look at life as a series of challenges instead of a series of threats. You know, that if you watch the news, you're gonna get you're gonna get fed a bunch of threats and a bunch of fear, and it's gonna shut down your immune system. I'm not saying don't be aware of what's going on, but be aware that you're being manipulated to buy products or to do certain things. And one of the things I know is the healthier you are, the less likely you are to be a, a, a follower. You know, 100%. Followers will, followers will be led by leaders, but leaders will never follow followers. So you want to be the leader. Oh, beautifully articulated. I mean, you said so many things there that I just want to be like, let's go down all of these rabbit holes in sequence because they're so interesting to me. But I think the best way to sum it up is, you know, I always educate the clients of mine that say, you're the sum of your inputs. The output is the summation of your your food, your lifestyle choices, your activity level, your thoughts. You know, I'm a, I'm a mentor of mine and someone we both know, Dr. Jeff Marangel, always says thoughts are things, right? So you can consume and express toxic thoughts. If you're watching the news, you're consuming toxic media. And, you know, I learned this from you about 5% of our realities is conscious. So 95% of the background noise, which is really that which drives the ship is really going to be what we are actually expressing out to the world. And since we're just consciousness trying to know itself, we better vibrate to the highest level we can. And it does take a lot of personal accountability and the ability to be radically honest with yourself about how much energy and effort you're willing to dive into things. You touched on so many wonderful aspects there that I wanted you to. You must have picked up on my thought process because we just did a uh, expose on sleep and then we did one on respiration and then you're coming in to kind of tie all those things together where does sleep come into this whole mix and how do you guys look at using something like brain tap as a tool to aid sleep and right. improve sleep yeah first of all sleep is the time you incubate your superpowers so if you're not sleeping you don't get everything you need and what we find is that's the first thing you have to if you're going to fix something you want to fix the sleep process. And the reason is that back in 2015, they actually figured out why. Not just that we need to lay in bed for eight hours. We don't. The uh, science shows six and a half hours. So that's the first lie people tell you. So the six and a half hours is the people who sleep six and a half hours sleep, live the longest. So I always look at longevity studies rather than scientific studies where they're just looking at how good you feel right now. And the reason what they found out in 2015 is we have us we have something in the body called the glialymphomic system. Now, the lymph system, if you've ever taken physiology class in college or even in high school, sometimes they'll talk about it. 
Everywhere there's a blood vessel, there's a lymph vessel. And the lymph's job is to take the toxins out of the blood or whatever is going on. It's the garbage man of the system. And so, it, but they didn't know the brain had it. If you look at any physiology books before 2015, you'll see the lymph system stops at the neck. And what they did was in the American Scientific, uh, in, in the um, March issue that year, there, and you actually can go to page 45 and you go online, you'll see it there. There's an article, it talks about the glialymphomic system. They call it the trash, um, I think they call it the trash department of the brain because they figured out, they finally observed the brain while somebody was sleeping and they realized there's a sense system that comes online. Now, every physiology book will tell you wherever there's a blood vessel, there's a lymph vessel, but they didn't ever account for it in the brain because they thought this brain was a specialized organ that was treated and, and basically isolated from everything else. Now, if any of you on the call have ever woke up at night and you had sleep paralysis, you actually woke up in the middle of a cleaning cycle. So imagine you work, you work at the Ford plant and you're making Model Ts and you need to clean the line. Well, you're not going to keep working. They're going to put you on break. They're going to shut down the line. They're going to clean the line. Then they're going to give you back after break. Well, these breaks last microseconds. They're not long because we can't be offline that long. But if you ever wake up in the middle of one, you will feel like you're trapped in your body. You can't move. In fact, some people get, they call night terrors because they wake up in the middle of these cleaning cycles. But the, the reality is that that's a good thing. That means you're cleaning your brain. Now that happens it can happen up to an hour or more at night. That's that level four sleep. If you're measuring your sleep through the bio tracker or some kind of um, system that tracks that. So we find that in the brain, if you can get an hour of deep sleep, two hours of REM sleep, REM sleep is triggered because as you go through a sleep cycle, in, in even during the day, the, your brain is gonna trigger neurotransmitter production. So the neurotransmitters are made in the gut. They're not made in the brain, but we need them made in the gut. So if you're not getting sleep, you're not making the neurotransmitters you need. For example, if, if you have a good sleep cycle, you're going to have, like I said, three hours are going to be dedicated to deep sleep and REM sleep. The rest is going to be almost like what they call throwaway sleep, but we need it to process. We're processing our day. We're processing our memories. But while we're going through these sleep cycles, we're going through the different brain waves. So it's like an ocean wave. We And we don't want to wake up, right? So what happens if your brain is dysregulated at night at two o'clock? Every person on earth, your temperature is going to increase two degrees. I don't care who you are, where you're at in the world. This is the way our body recycles. It's, a, it's like a reboot two in, the, two in the morning. Now, if your brain's dysregulated, it can go as high as five degrees. Now, what happens if you go from 98 to 103? It's dangerous for your meninges. Yeah, yeah, you're going to wake up, you're going to be anxious, you're going to be terrified. And you're going to then go to the doctor. And if you're not a health practitioner, they're going to put you on some kind of weird drug that doesn't work. There's never been an SSRI that beat the placebo. And the placebo is up to 40% now. So that means that they'll give them this pill and they're going to get that's going to take their brain offline. They're not going to sleep well. So sleep is crucial. And our sleep studies show that even coal miners, we just did a study with West in Western Australia with coal miners. These are because people always said, why are you using light in the eyes, retinal flashing, which we can get into in a little bit. But the reason is there's more mitochondria per square inch in the eye than any other area of the body. Now, the brain has the most mitochondria. Mitochondria's job is to absorb and transmit light. So when you if you've ever been in a room and you felt like somebody's watching you and then you turn around and they are, that's because you felt their photaic exchange with your body. It happens all the time. <clears throat> and so when we're doing retinal flashing, what we're doing is we're training the brain and we're getting energy into the brain. One of the most powerful nutrients that's being underprescribed today is light. We all know the benefit of sunlight and for, especially for uh, seasonal affective disorder, but light modulates every activity in the body. And enzymes are light. If you look up the, they basically cause the body to produce light. So, Every time they catalyze a reaction, they give off photonic emission. Yes. So they are, it's a, that's why we became actively involved with enzymes because anything to do with light, sound, and vibration, I'm going to research and learn. So we need light in this body and it's the most underprescribed nutrient on earth. So enzymes fall into that category that we need light. Now, of course, they work with light outside, but as we go through that sleep cycle, all of our neurotransmitters meet. 
Alpha, we're going to produce more acetylcholine. Uh, theta, we're going to produce GABA. Now, GABA is a precursor to DMT for those that know about plant-based medicine. And that's why you have more dreams. So you need that DMT to dream. If not, I love people who go, I don't dream. You do dream. You just don't remember it because you wouldn't be alive. <laughs> you know, the, but if you don't have enough DMT in your body or you don't, you don't activate it, then you don't remember it. So a lot of people want, and then of course, when you're in Delta, you produce serotonin, which is the happy hormone that they've overproduced and over basically giving people too much. When you're in beta, beta is the bad guy, but it's not really the bad guy. We need those. When you have that dopamine hit, a lot of people don't realize that, uh, and here's what happens when people are fearful, they're not going to sleep a lot. They get a dopamine hit. Well, that's the exact opposite effect you want right before bed because it's an adjutant. And dopamine doesn't get triggered when you're doing the activity. It gets triggered when you think about doing the activity. That's why addictions are so bad, because by doing it, you don't get satisfaction. Only by thinking about doing it do you get satisfaction. So it's almost like what came first, the chicken or the egg. You know, the, the, the reality is that they're symbiotic. So you've got to just kind of change. You got to change the thought before the thought. And you can only do that when you meditate and figure out what you're thinking, because most people are unconscious. Remember, most people are running around in high delta. And when you're in high delta, you allow the subconscious to run the whole show. And if, of course, if you're if you've trained your subconscious well, you've had good mothers, brothers, teachers and preachers. And you're, you know, like you're I tell people, if you lived on Gilligan's Island, you only had to worry about if the choice was Marianne or Ginger, then you don't have the same stress. You know, people bring you coconut cream pies on a desert island. I mean, that doesn't happen in real life. You know, that's a fairy tale. So in real, in the real world, we're going to get stressed. And a lot of people are always thinking, I just want a stress-free life. Well, if you want a stress-free life, you're going to be dead. We don't want to have a stress-free life. What we want is the capacity to handle that stress so it feels like nothing. And that's you can only do that with a good night's sleep, with a detoxed brain, with an enzymatically fine-tuned machine called our human body. And you can handle, you can move through life with, the skill and adeptness of a finely tuned machine. But you can't do that when you feed it junk. I mean, how many people would have a Denali and, you know, put regular gas in it? You know, it just wouldn't happen. They would put the finest gas. They would get it tuned up. We're like the finest sports car. You know, they don't even compare to what we are. But people will just feed it junk and wonder, they think it's a nuclear uh, receptor or something that you can put anything in, it's going to convert it into energy. You know, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> yeah, I would say that uh, one time someone I know referred to the human body as the most complex technology ever known to man. And over these last few years, having delved into that concept a little bit more, it's really starting to reveal itself in many ways, because we haven't even really began to tap into what we can really do, which I know it's something that you're you know, trying to give to the world. You mentioned something previously, you said the words delta, theta, uh, alpha, beta, you're talking about brain waves, right? And yeah. there are what five major brain waves. So the four I mentioned plus gamma, and they go from essentially lower to higher frequencies. This is something that's interested me in the last couple of years clinically, because of not only the ability to, to check them with, you know, HRV assessments or like a WAVI headset, but how do brain waves relate to a healthy brain? You said being in high Delta is bad. So what right. do you think clinicians should know about brain waves to maybe take some of this context and make it something that they teach their clients. All right. Well, brain waves are actually everything. And in, in fact, um, if you, if we are on a spaceship coming to earth, we would res the earth would resonate between 0 0.05 and 100. These happen to be the same as our brain waves. So the low cycling waves, those are Delta. So there are places on the planet that they call dead zones that actually are less than 0.5, you know, right around five, a cycles per second. There are places that are 100, like a volcano going off. Now, if we remember back to when the tsunami happened, if you, anybody wants to go back and look at the YouTube video, you'll notice when the tsunami's coming in, there's no animals, no birds, no dogs, no cats, no animals, because they're in tune with the planet. They knew something was about to happen because there was a probably a 45 to 60 hertz frequency wave coming at them. And they were tuned in. The earthly, the, the people in that area were running out after the wave. We never saw them again. 
because they were, you know, and that's the way most people do is they keep, they run after the danger and they don't realize we, our gut really, it will tell us what's going on. You know, when somebody says, I didn't follow my gut, I knew I shouldn't have done business with that person. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that thing. I shouldn't have gone on that trip. I shouldn't, if they would just listen, the intelligence that's within us will help us. So brain waves also do this. If we're in an environment, uh, for instance, let's say that you and I, I, I wanted you to come to a party with me because I'm going to teach, I'm going to introduce you to some really cool people. And I said, you got to be there. You go, you know, I'm really not feeling like it, but I talked you into coming and, and we go to this event. And at first you're going, man, I hope I'm going to leave early. This is my scene. But they start playing all your favorite music. Pretty soon I look over, you're tapping your toes, you're swaying. I'm going, hey, Roland, I thought you didn't want to come. You go, well, they're playing all my music from my high school or whatever. That's because these things on our body called chromoforms, these are little batteries that absorb energy. We can give it energy through foods we consume, which is the most rudimentary way of feeding the body, or we can do it through light, sound, and vibration. Our body will fill up with that energy. If it does, our body is a community of cells, 75 trillion cells. When one cell fills up with energy, it will share it with the ones next to it. And when the body is totally full, we have to move like an autistic child that stems. They, they start stimming because they're full of energy and they got to get rid of it. Or you have to run or you have to play, you have to do something. Well, our body's a natural collector of energy. And if we're around gainers, we get energy from them. We would derive energy and resources. When we're around drainers, we feel worse. So one of the, one of the things that brainwaves will do is they will show you, is this a gainer or a drainer I'm with? Or what we call energy vampires. You know, we all know that person that walks in the room and it gets a little darker. You know, we, we don't want to hang out with those people. We want to, yeah. when the person walks in the room, it gets a little brighter. That's the person we want to be around. And just so everyone understands this, our, we know that when you're a state, in a state of alpha and theta, when your alpha and theta are, are balanced, uh, what I mean by balanced, meaning that there's about 45% beta activity in your brain, 30% alpha, about 20% theta, you are a broadcasting light machine. You literally broadcast 8, 10 nanometer light. Every person on earth does. That's why they can see you on infrared cameras. Now, what my science officer did, most people know who Tom Brady is. He's a football player, right? He just retired. Well, his clothing called TB12 was designed by my science officer, Dr. Francisco Cedral. And they did this. They did some experiments. People who are in a state of love and peace and tranquility, a state of this balanced brainwave state, they transmit or produce 200 times more light than people who are in a state of depression. And those people in depression will have that 65 or more percent delta because their brain's saying, you need to reboot. You know, they act like the body's a Microsoft operating system, you know, where it's going to fix itself by rebooting and it can, but then they reboot, they go to sleep and they can't sleep and they get worried and they get frustrated. So, but if we can train our brain, and this is one of the big things that I've learned my whole life since I was 12, is that I can train my brain to go to sleep at any time, anywhere, around anyone, because I'm not dependent upon, is it noisy? Is it quiet? Is it... Is this comfortable or not? And of course, as much as I fly around, if I was dependent upon nice, comfortable beds, I would never sleep. You know, so you, you've got to create your own environment. And this starts with your belief system. So the belief system isn't everything, but it can produce everything. You know, but as soon as you start to understand that, and I had a time in my life where I couldn't sleep. This was, I was very young and my dad taught me sleep control and awake control. Because most some people think kids don't get anxious. I was one of the most anxious, nervous kids. Now, if you give me a, a pad of paper or paintbrush, I was fine. I was, I was in my own little world. I could stay there all day. But you put a book in front of me or tell me I had to get up in front and talk to people. I mean, that's why even my friends from, from uh, high school and college go, you do what for a living? Because I would never get up in front of people. <laughs> you know that? But life changes you, right? So that's the way it works. Yeah, if you adapt, I mean, I, I'm I'm sure of a couple of things now. One that I'm pretty sure your father was Obi Wan Kenobi. You're just not saying. <laughs> um, and secondly, you know, that's a really really amazing insight because I I would I'm gonna overly simplify a concept, but it may fit the narrative for people. When someone is trying to make a physical change, a lot of what holds them back is their inner will, right? Their desire mm -hmm. or lack of desire to facilitate changes. So it sounds like you're saying if someone is in a chronic state of inflammation 
under recovery, sleep deprivation, their brain is not actually conscious enough to properly hear what you are requesting of them, them to process the information, finalize their thought, and then repeat it back to you so they know what they're doing. It's just going, you're watching the words go over them. Right. Yeah. I mean, those listening to us right now, think of two people you know. If this isn't you, it's both of them. Two thirds of the world isn't sleeping. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a big deal, right? And they know that even professional drivers, like race car drivers that can ride, they can like, uh, when I got to scan Danica Patrick, this is a superhuman. Our brain is not supposed to be able to process speeds of over 180 miles an hour. So she's doing it somehow. She's rendering reality faster than we're supposedly physiologically possible. So that means that she has some kind of brain power that other people don't have. If we get, if we deprive them of sleep two nights, it's equivalent to them having three drinks. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. So we have this. So the other thing, let's just do a little experiment with the people that aren't driving down the road, if they're listening to this. But if you take your hands, I'm, I have mine in front of me now, and you put them together into a, and you overlap them, and you have to choose if your right thumb or left thumb is on top. So your hands are clasped in front of you. If your left thumb's on top, take the right thumb and roll it on top and vice versa. What does that feel like? Physiologically, for most people, that's going to feel a little uncomfortable. And if I ask you to shake it out and put it together, did you go back to the old way or did you go to the new way? 95% of the people will go back to the old way because it's comfortable. This is your physiology speaking. So when you go to make a change in your life and your physiology isn't working right, for instance, you didn't digest your food. And, and a lot of problems is, you know, that as we age, we don't die. They say we die because we're not metabolizing, digesting our food. Now, what does that? Enzymes, right? So if you can't digest and metabolize food, you know, most people will, what will they do? They'll stop eating because they're not, they're not able to eat because they feel bad when they eat because they're not able to break down, metabolize and digest the food. So that started when they were in their teens. It didn't start when they were 90 you know, their, their behavior patterns. So we need to start changing those, changing things up. you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And especially like for those people on, what I always told people when we gave them, uh, when we had a class about enzymes and I would teach them this little exercise, I'd say at first taking those enzymes is going to be like putting that old, that new thumb on top. It's going to feel uncomfortable, but eventually, and I pull out my little thing, I have in my pocket and I have my little enzyme bag. I say, you'll carry these like I do. Because I take two at every meal, even if I'm eating a full vegetable meal that's uncooked, I'm still going to take them because I'm 61 right now and I want to keep being young. You know, my, my age on the neurocheck is 31. I want to keep being able to show people. There you go. <laughs> I'm, bi I'm biologically 31. And, and even though my, and my clock on my birth certificate says I'm 61, you know, and this is because you, you have to eat health. Those things show up, you know, and they show up and when people give you tests, I mean, you can tell at night. If you've had, you know, when you're traveling, like I know you do as well to, to conferences, you might only get to eat at 10 o'clock at night, which isn't good. I like to eat while it's still light out, right? They say that the enzymes work better if you eat before sundown. But if I'm going to eat at night, I'm going to, I might even take three enzymes at that meal, not just two or one, you know, depending upon what the bottle says I should take, you know, and I always take enzymes before I sleep. And I always take them in the morning when I wake up because I want to clear, I, I read an article. I don't know if it was from us enzymes or not, but I've done a lot over the years with you guys. And it was something that said, you can clear out the, uh, the placking by taking enzymes first thing in the morning. And I've been doing it ever since. And I, I feel like my blood is, because I also have that problem with my blood where I have to give blood every two months because I mm. make red blood cells. So I do everything I can to keep my blood viscosity, you know, is free flowing as possible. Well, the, with the amount you fly, I mean, being so disconnected from the earth's magnetic field, most people don't realize the most likely time you're going to have an embolism or, or some kind of deep vein thrombosis is after a long, you know, transatlantic flight. So uh, a quick hack that I always give you know, all the athletes I work with or the people that I know that travel is I tell them to take two or three natto columbar kinase enzymes or a systemic enzyme complex two hours prior to takeoff and then stay fasted over the course of the flight and mega hydrate. We got to make sure that we get you some enzymes because I know you're in the thick of conference season. You probably <laughs> routed your mail on a plane. We got to make sure that happens. But you gave me an idea. You said I would take them with every meal. You know how there's always a salt and a pepper shaker on a dinner yeah. table? 
Mm-hmm. I think we need to have a bottle of enzymes and make it a trio. So this way, every dinner table in America has a bottle of digestive enzymes and they're always there. And all you can do is say no. And we need ones that are neutral flavors so we can sprinkle them on our grandkids and children's yeah. plate without them knowing it. Ours have no <laughs> flavor. You open up the capsule, you tell them to look over there. There's a, there's a bird <laughs> flying. You sprinkle it on the food and it's done. There you go. You mentioned something else that was really cool about, you know, people's brains and perceptions. Um, the reason we're doing all these master classes is this is kind of a serendipitous thing and, and you'll probably giggle at it. So we have this book that was written called The Thyroid Debacle by two of the doctors that we're very close with as a company. And each month they do this fitness factor. So we just finished respiration and uh, this coming month we're doing emotional fitness. And in the book, Brain tap is actually mentioned as one of the tools that you can incorporate into your life as a technology that can help people regulate their emotional disharmonies in any way, shape, or form. Can you talk a little bit about how brain coherence may help regulate emotions? Because it, it, it'll be a nice preview into what uh, we're doing next month for the webinar. Well, the key is we call it an energy economy, really, because if you're low energy, you're going to have low vibratory thoughts low vibratory activities, you're going to have hedonistic behaviors and you're going to crave hedonistic foods. You know, that's the, that's just the long and short of it. So if we can feed energy to the brain, that will through something called photobiomodulation feed the rest of the body. Now there's a lot of other ways to do it as well, but to get the brain trained, if the brain can stay coherent. So let's say we wake up in the morning and you have a dysregulated brain. How do you know you have a dysregulated brain in the morning? You can't function without your cup of coffee. If you can't function without coffee, your brain is dysregulated. You just slept for God's sake for however many hours. Why do you need coffee when you get up? You know, it's crazy. Now, I'm not against coffee. You know, if I have my bulletproof coffee, it's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning. Not first. You want to wait till the the adenosine is burned off for at least 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah, because as soon as you have that coffee, you don't realize you're chasing insulin the rest of the day. Your body is tuned up at that moment. So what we have is there's a training we call SM, SMR. This is another brainwave, but it's between beta and alpha. This is the one as we get better looking and more intelligent with age, this is the one that atrophies. It also has to do with the distributor system. So when you think about the elderly, they're really, it's a brain problem. Of course, physical fitness can help, but we've done studies where people did physical fitness or they did brain tap. We had better balance from brain tap than they did by doing physical exercise because you can immediately get the impact because what moves muscles? The muscles don't move the brain. The brain moves the muscles that move the bones that move, that move you on the way. So we've got to go to the source. And so that's really important in the morning. We call those digital coffee because if you, what happens in the morning, if we were to wake up in the ancient tradition, uh, like 200 years ago, we might be outside. We're going to, the, the, the earth's going to warm up. We're going to get up. The sun's rising. Uh, the neoprenephrine, uh, adrenaline, cortisol is going to wake us up. And we're not going to worry about checking our phone. You know, do we get any, did we get any likes on our social media? You know, all those things, you know, <laughs> the addiction of the post office and see if anybody wrote you a, a letter, you know, th- those things didn't happen. So we just woke up. There was no alarm clocks freaking out our nervous system which I'm against the alarm clocks. I think you should not have an alarm clock. If you want to set it, get something you can play some beautiful music, something you really like that can be mm-hmm. fighting to the world. Imagine you're coming back from a journey. You just you just went to wherever we go and we sleep, which must be much better than where we're at now because everybody wants to do it more. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> you know, when you're coming back, give yourself permission. Now in the middle of the day, remember I said the temperature increases two degrees? At two o'clock every day around the world, no matter where you're at, these bodies were designed for the Serengeti. So what happens on the Serengeti at two o'clock in the afternoon? Everybody's sleeping. Nobody's chasing any zebras at that time. So the zebra takes a nap. We should be sitting right there next to the zebra taking a nap. But hell no, we're we're American. We're going to go have coffee, um, tea, chocolate, whatever it is. We're going to have some kind of stimulant, which most people don't know, like you're drinking water. And I have my, I have my hydrogen water here. This is a really cool brand called Sokoseni from the Andes Mountains. It's got more minerals in it than any water I've ever tried. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And so that's giving you more hydrogen. If your body is breaking the binds, the covalent binds of that water and giving you more energy than a cup of coffee. But if you're if you trained your body to have coffee, 
then you'll you'll crave that over water. But as soon as you do it, so in, but in the middle of the day, we kind of got off there. In the middle of the day, when we're when we have that energy drop, that's when we're supposed to be taking a nap. Now, most people don't have four hours. The studies show you need four hours to take a power nap. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have four hours. Sleep from two to six. That's never 40 minutes is more likely the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. But it, you can do a 20 minute brain tap session in the middle of the day. And we showed the, the people at Kansas City Sport, the soccer team, the pro team, we showed them they could get more recovery from 20 minutes of brain tap than four hours of recovery after a practice. So they actually put in a 20 station brain tapping room in, in at their Kansas City Sport facility because they recovery is people are still now noticing that recovery is the missing piece in everything in wellness. It's not all about do, do, do. Sometimes it's about do nothing. But while you're doing nothing, your body's doing a lot. You know, it's doing a lot of neurological activity. It's retraining. It's replenishing. You're basically re-energizing re the body. So in the middle of the day, or if you can't do that, do it right when you get home from work. And I tell people, your family doesn't deserve the stressed person. It deserves the joyful, energetic, uh, happy-go-lucky person that you can feel like when you have energy. Because, you know, the world has an... The world wants to kick you down. It's not because it doesn't really want to do it. It's just like it's a dog eat dog world. We've all heard that. So when you're out there giving your all and you come home, unfortunately, it's usually your loved ones that get the brunt of it. So you want to treat them just as well as just like you just met them. You know, when, you, when you're dating somebody, you don't treat them the same, unfortunately, as you do five years later. So you got to catch yourself and say, how can you rekindle? You know, the, those relationships that work, they work because somebody's working on them. So you want to show up as your best self. So rege regenerate. Now at night, if you, a lot of people that two thirds of the world that isn't sleeping, what happens is all day long, their brain's in this Delta profile, but at night when they lay down, it changes profile. Their Delta diminishes and their beta increases. Exact and opposite of what you want. I assume. What's that? The exact opposite of what yes. you want. Yeah. So the brain is dysregulated. That's what I'm talking about, a dysregulated brain. What happens during the day, it's like a, uh, a knife that gets dull, 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 dull. Nobody ever sharpened it. And then finally you pass out. And then during sleep, you get a little bit of sharpness back. You wake up, you take coffee and you get a synthetic sharpness and, and you eat a candy bar and you get another synthetic sharpness. And you start believing that it's the it's the biological system that's doing it when it's Really, you're at the expense of your biological system. Your, your body is actually chasing health by destroying itself because it has to rob Peter to pay Paul, just like I said earlier. So at night, when you go to sleep, we have Delta sessions. They're designed to shut the brain down and get into that deep sleep cycle. The average person takes four hours to go through their first cycle of sleep. But when you use the brain tap, it takes less than an hour. What this means is that first four-hour sleep cycle that most people are going through, you do it in an hour. So most people will call and say, I feel energized, but I'm only sleeping seven hours or I'm only sleeping eight hours. I, I need 10 hours. I go, do you really? Do you feel, oh, I feel energized, but when's it going to stop? I go, it's not. This is the new you. It's the. This is you. This is who you've always been. Get used right. to it. <laughs> so those are the three ways that when the, when you think about, and we have different sessions set up that way. So people can really train their brain and you don't have to do it every day like that, but if you're compromised and you're working on some health issue, you do. But if you just want to stay optimized, at least once a day is really good or at minimum every 72 hours because your nervous system will try to remember who you are every 72 hours. And your normal might not be normal because you've been Abby normal, like, uh, you know, <laughs> the Frankenstein movie, you know, for so long, your body doesn't know what normal is anymore. So we need to get that. We need to get that brain and body back in coherence. Oh yeah. Normal is not something I've ever really been called. So I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I want to say something that's quite interesting. You know, you mentioned, you know, adding these specific sessions, you and I have collaborated a lot in the past with different athletes. And I want to tell you a story. I didn't have a chance to tell you. So I have one athlete who I've been working with for a while and he has an autoimmune condition and, you know, Oh, I've looked at blood work of his over the last two years and his TSH has always been close to five. You look at this guy, he's a stud, you know, 6'1", 6'2", 215, negative body fat. But clearly there's a, a discordance of communication within his brain. So over the last year and a half, because athletes are like, you know, stray dogs, they're a little skittish. They're not necessarily trusting at first. We started with enzymes. Cool. Then I was able to convince him to try some PEMF and then brain tap. And I've actually combined the two therapies. I have 
called them the magic carpet. And I'm hoping I can trademark that because he actually calls it the magic carpet. I got his most recent blood work and his TSH is under four for the first time in the last five, six years of his professional career. But he's been so diligent at it. Another client I worked with, we both know, um, was on a path towards, you know, alcohol recovery and now is absolutely flying doing better than he's ever done and i've used the same combination of enzymes probiotics obviously dietary and lifestyle recommendations he religiously does his brain tap three times a day so much so that he asked me should he bring it on vacation with him because he got anxious to have it not in his presence right so it's, it's kind of an interesting thing we have time for about one more question because i know your answers are always very detailed because we have about an hour yeah. we've talked a lot about enzymes and this is entirely a thought exercise how do you think light sound vibration in the brain tap may affect the microbiome well we know that the microbiome absorbs and loves light energy so the way photobiomodulation works is that the hemoglobin will absorb the light energy so think of your eyes your eyes are not just attached to your brain they are your brain so when somebody says you got beautiful eyes, they're really talking about your brain. And the eye's job is to absorb light energy. You know, when you, if you have dark eyes like we do, then you're not going to absorb as much light. If you have green or blue eyes, you're going to absorb more light. I do so, have green eyes. Just the lights in here are kind okay. of weird. All right. So you're you're going to. So some people are a little more sensitive. Uh, yeah. Typically, there are of course brown eyed people that are sensitive too, but. That's because of how much it's like an aperture, right? That's why the it, it opens and closes. It's it's adjusting for the light. So that light goes from there right into the brain and gives the that it's all done through the mitochondria. So when the with the hemoglobin, it'll create vasodilation and blood flow, so microcirculation improvement. And so we've even had two studies where the the uh, eye pressure for macular degeneration has been reduced by using brain tap because we're bringing more blood flow to that area. So, in, but then it's all about getting the energy to the mitochondria in the brain. So it goes first from the eyes. When the eyes mitochondria is full, which doesn't take much because it's not a lot, it will then pass that energy on to the, the next. It's like the, our community of cells in our body, if they're functioning right, they share everything. Mm -hmm. You take as much as you need. They don't keep any extra. They share it with the rest. And so that's what happens. And then our ears, the ears, people go, why do you have lights in the ears? Well, it's because the ears, all the blood in, passes through the body. It takes about four to five minutes through the ears because of the capillaries and things in there. But it's a perfect place to add light to the hemoglobin. And then the ears actually control the temperature of the brain. So guess where the blood goes from the ears? It goes right into the brain. So now we're delivering light into the brain. Now you can also do nasally and, and things like that, but these are the two ways that are so convenient. And then we also put that light with frequency and the mitochondria is actually what starts the Krebs cycle or the functioning of the cell. So when, when that cell loses its light, it dies. There's actually a story, a mythical story of a chicken heart that was kept alive 35 years in Harvard because they gave it the right light energy. They fed it and they detoxified it. They said they could have kept the heart alive, and it was disembodied. It wasn't attached to anything. They said they could have kept the cells of that heart alive forever because our cells are not designed to expire. They expire because of toxic waste in the cell, and it's not able to clear it out or not getting the right nutrients, not getting the right enzymatic action at the cellular level. So if we can do that, that's why so many people are advocates with uh, enzymes for anti-aging because you can just see it. I mean, you can see it in your skin because your skin is your biggest elimination organ. So um, people that have acne, acne and things like that, when I have them start doing uh, enzymes, a lot of times it clears up on them. You know, so th there's so much it does. And it's, it starts first with the mitochondria. So if you have good mitochondrial health, meaning you have a lot of energy, and the brain, remember, gets the first of everything. So it gets the first of light, gets the first of everything. So we want to feed that brain. And it's all about... The, the brain getting that mitochondria to come back online because what it'll do is it'll shut down the mitochondria because if it's not functioning correctly, it's not going to keep sending energy over there. It's going to shut down that region of the brain. And that region of the brain might be the part that's responsible for producing alpha activity mm -hmm. or theta activity. 
Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that, you know, at one point, mitochondria were bacteria themselves. So the ability for the body's microbiome and the microbes to communicate with the local gut cells, they probably exchange photons. They're like, what do you think of this one? I don't know. What do you think of that one? But if yeah. you're saying the brain gets everything first and it distributes it everywhere else, if we know the gut brain axis is a really important pathway of communication, conceivably, doing a brain tap might lead to an enhanced diversity within your microbiome. I mean, it's something that would be interesting to study, probably a little challenging to study. So yeah, our, our light helmet actually comes with a gut pad because when we're treating the brain, we got to treat the gut at the same time. If you're treating just the gut without the brain or the brain without the gut, you're missing 50% of the solution. 100%. And not only that, you look like Mega Man when you're using the light helmet. So it's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I have one of them. I I give it to all my guys who have head trauma. It works out really well. So Doc, I, I want to take the, the last few minutes to ask, you know, people are already asking, where can we find more about BrainTap? I think supplements and, and tools like BrainTap, they're synergists. They, they have a multiplicity effect in terms of the outcome because you can take great supplements, but if the body is not energetic enough to put them to good use, you're leaving a lot on the table. So if, if everyone here is using high quality supplements, which I know they are, and they're wanting to help their clients in clinical practice, where can they find more about BrainTap to purchase one, to get one? You know, I've started making my, all my clients buy a neural check and a BrainTap because I need them to track stuff. So I know that we're moving in the right direction. Why don't you tell everyone where they can get a little bit more information? Yeah, they can, of course they can follow me on social media, Dr. Patrick Porter. Uh, you know, at Dr. Patrick Porter. I have a website and Instagram and all that. Or they can go to braintap.com. I share it in the notes section. There's a discount code when people see me live. It's it's just spelled out Dr. Positive. And you should get the show special that we have. So that's my that's my moniker because I used to have a Dr. Friend positive. positive changes. In the um <laughs> we were addiction therapy. So the in the process, if you if you want to do something, there's also a 14-day trial there. So as long as you cancel within 14 days, you won't be charged and you'll get a free copy of my book, Thrive and Overdrive. All right. So, I mean, and you get to look this cool as you're going through the world. No, I'm entirely joking. You want to sit down or lie down somewhere comfortable. Um, it's a wonderful experience, something that is bringing a lot of legitimacy to energy medicine. I want to thank you for that because you're taking what a lot of people think of as woo woo. Oh, light, sound, vibration, wave your wand over someone. It's energy, guys. Everything is energy at the end of the day. We're oscillating fields of vibration with a little bit of, you know, mass here and there. But fundamentally, what we're trying to do is increase the vibration of everyone on the planet who comes into contact with all these things, be it supplements mm -hmm. or brain tap headsets. Yeah. One of the, one study that I think everyone should know about that I'm going to be sharing more about is I'm going to Brazil on April 10th with our science officer because they did three studies there where we proved brain tap beat out opioids in three studies for fibromyalgia. So brain tap, and that was without the, the headset. It was just done with the app. So if you're wondering, wow. what are we going to get out of just downloading the app? We, we beat out opioids. You got to put that into perspective. And that means that people's own brain, the most powerful pharmacy on earth is a human brain. And if we give it the right materials, it can keep creating those wonderful states of health and healing and vitality um, you know, that we need. And I think this is just one step. I mean, you know, we have to do it all, though. You have to move, breathe, eat, think, and do some kind of brain fitness. If it's not brain tip, you got to find something to keep your brain active and, and so that you have a good brain. I mean, think about the elders. You know, when you read about history, they don't say, we keep all the wisdom of the tribe with the youngers. No, that's not what they say. <laughs> we keep the wisdom of the tribe with the elders. You know, so that must mean that our brains were designed to work until we die, not until... We were 60 and we have our kids take care of us. You know, that's not the way it works. The, our brain can rebuild itself. And, and just so everyone, I believe enzymes have a strong component to that because we got to keep the placking down and enzymes have a strong component to that. We've got to keep it. The enzymatic action of the body needs to stay peaked so that we can stay youthful on the inside as well as the outside. Perfectly said. And, and, you know, we're trying to champion the popularity of enzymes in the Western world because it never really caught on like it did in Europe and, and in Southeast Asia and various places. So, Dr. Porter, I want to thank you for your time. I don't think this is going to be the last time we see you or at all the last time we collaborate. I think enzymes, light, sound and vibration are just starting to come together in a new way. So thank you for being on the masterclass and we hope to see you again soon. 
Well, it's great to be here, and I'm a big supporter of what you guys are doing over there. Thank you. Likewise, we like to support you however we can. So thanks, everyone, for being part of this masterclass. We'll see you next month for emotional fitness. And uh, until then, you know, stay positive, shine bright, and get some good light. Oh, that rhymes. I literally just made that up on the spot. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Take okay. care. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye now.